I mean, let's be real. Let's look at the statistics. Where do you think a lot of your criminals, and I'm not saying all of them, all right, but where do you think a lot of your criminals get their guns from? If you go in and watch that video, you'll see what I'm talking about. So check out that I was victimized video, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. What's up everybody, Chris, South Carolina Gun School, and today I wanted to kind of do a little recap on the video where I was talking about being victimized uh, because I've been getting a lot of questions around that concerning what the law says and things like that. So I wanted to do a little recap to talk about uh, the I Am Victimized video and what happened to me at a training event where my vehicle was broken into because in that video, and, and I'll have it linked in at the, if you are new or you haven't seen it, I'll have it linked in at the end uh, of this. I'll have some pictures up here uh, while I'm talking so you can kind of see uh, what happened as well too. But again, I'll have the original or the I Was Victimized video linked in at the end of this video, but that way you can see what did kind of help me and save me from having a firearm essentially stolen from my vehicle. So yes, my vehicle was broken into and I had it in a safe under the back seat of my truck. And it's a safe that's mounted down, locked up. You can see where they tried to pop it open, but Again, what I'm addressing here are some of the questions around what the law says. Because I, some of you do seem concerned to make sure you are legal with what you are doing. But a lot of what I'm gonna talk about is South Carolina law. So please make sure you go out to somebody like USCCA here and check out their website and read you know, what your state says because every state is gonna be different. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I know every single carry law and where you can have it in your vehicle stuff for every freaking state. Uh, if, if somebody is saying that, then I'm sorry, they're full of shit. But what I'm focusing on here uh, a lot is what South Carolina, that's where I'm at. But some of it is uh, fairly close with other states and some of it is very, very different than some of your other states. So please, again, go out to USCCA's website, you don't have to be a member to use their reciprocity stuff and their to see about the laws and things like that. But now for South Carolina, your gun locked up in your vehicle is a properly secured firearm. All right, because again, if you go back in and watch my uh, constitutional carry video, matter of fact, it should be popping up, bing, 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 somewhere in the screen here that was one thing that did change where you can have it in your vehicle. So again, when that changed, now you can put it wherever you want in your vehicle. But just understand, if you leave it sitting in your cup holder or laying on your dash or sitting in your seat or down in your floorboard where it's somewhere in plain sight, criminal comes by, what do you think's gonna happen? I mean, let's be real, let's look at the statistics where do you think a lot of your criminals, and I'm not saying all of them, all right, but where do you think a lot of your criminals get their guns from? If you go in and watch that video, you'll see what I'm talking about. So check out that I was victimized video, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So again, by law, your gun locked in your vehicle is a properly secured firearm when you're transporting it. But now let's also look with somebody breaking into your vehicle. Let's just say it's not in plain sight. You've got it in uh, your glove box uh, or your console, or maybe you've got it in a little case under one of the seats, the case in the trunk, wherever you've got it in. Maybe you've got it in the case laying in the back seat, something's covered. But let's just say it's not in plain view sight, but criminals are gonna do criminal things and they get in your vehicle. How easy do you think it is to pop open a locked glove box or a locked console? Pretty freaking easy. Pretty freaking easy to pop that stuff open. Matter of fact, I'll do a video. Um, we'll, do, we'll do another video 
showing you how easy it is to pop open a locked glove box or a locked console. So we'll do a little, we'll have a video coming up uh, in the upcoming weeks showing you how easy it is to pop that stuff open. You know, now uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm gonna let you go and do some research and see what happened in that video, but other people had stuff locked up. It just wasn't necessarily what you want to say it bolted down in the vehicle. So I'm go look at the safe that I use. Check out that video. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But in a lot of what I talk about in there is that's why we've got to take our security or securing the firearm in the vehicle up another level. Meaning we really need to outdo what the law says. Again, the law says the gun locked, your vehicle locked, your gun inside that vehicle is properly secured. But if you're somewhere where you can't take your firearm, all right, or I just didn't have room in the case for it, so I stuck it in that safe. That's exactly why I have that safe, is if I'm somewhere where I have to, I'm not gonna be able to take a particular firearm or I can't take my carry gun, because there are places where we cannot carry our firearms. Now, if you want to wear yours, wear yours. I'm not telling you to do anything you don't want to do. I'm just saying, we're still a society with the legal system. So there are some places where we can't take our guns, and that's why, hence for us, the DMV. You can't go into the DMV with your gun on. You can go in and ask for permission on a side note there, but you can't go in with your gun on. So I lock it up. And now look, I have asked at the DMV before. They ain't going to give you, if you get permission, you let me know who you talk to and exactly how you phrase that to get them to tell you a yes. Because I ain't got it yet. But what I do is I make sure I lock it up in that safe. But now what I am getting ready to do is to take my center console security up a notch. So now I don't have to get out Oh, lift up the back seat, put my gun in there. Now I can just put it right into my console and I can lock it up. They, the same company that I use for that safe under my seat makes a safe for the center console and it bolts into the vehicle. You don't have to do, add any extra holes, drill any extra holes. You're gonna use holes that are already there. But it does bolt into the center console. So it's not something where they're gonna be able to take that thing with you. Like if I just had a cable locked in there. If you don't have room for something like that, they have great options. Make sure it is something you can secure to your vehicle with bolts, nuts, screws, things like that. Cables can be cut. It happens. Trust me. You'll see. But I just wanted to kind of recap that video and help everybody understand what the law says as far as properly securing your vehicle. It locked. Gun in the vehicle is properly secured. Like I say, take it up another level. Let's do a little better than what the law says to make sure we're not arming criminals. So I hope you will go check out that video. I hope you will please continue to like, share, support, subscribe, follow if you can become a member, but just help sharing and subscribing, watching, commenting, let me know how I'm doing, what you wanna see. It all helps out, and that's all I can ask for, and it's much, much appreciated. I can't thank you all enough. But please, folks, always remember, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.